So we're here to talk about cybernetics for the masses, which is to say how you and I and left anonym here can hack ourselves and hack our bodies, which is really exciting because, no? Oh, oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> anyway, um, please give left anonym a really warm welcome. I am really excited for this. Hi. <laughs> Okay, I guess I should start then. Um, hi, first of all, forgive me if I sound funny because I've never spoken on a microphone before. Also, I've never seen this many people in one place ever, so I might be a little bit nervous and I might even pass out. But anyway, <laughs> I'm just here to talk to you guys about stuff that I do for fun, which is not very complex and not very high tech, but not many people seem to be into it. So they asked me to do a talk, so I'm doing a talk. It's probably gonna be more of a jabber, but. First of all, I, my name's Left. I work with mostly implants. Uh, they're mostly in the field of sensory expansion. That is, I work with adding more data onto the sensory data that you get from real life. It sounds incredibly complex. It's really not. Uh, the whole thing works on one basic principle. That is that your nerves are electric things and electric devices can set off nerves quite simply. I'll be explaining all of this later. I won't be giving proper technical instructions because I don't actually know the legality of anything like that. So, should, seriously, uh, doctors won't touch me in England. So, if anyone actually wants proper instructions, contact me via email. That will be coming up in a second. And I'll be happy to give you step by steps if you want them. And it's really not very difficult, but it hurts a lot, is the only thing. <laughs> Okay, so this is me. I'm not very big. I'm not very clever. All I do is play about with junk. I cut holes in myself. I put things in the holes. The holes are full of electricity, and that's how things work. It's, it's not complicated at all. That's my email address there if anyone wants to contact me. Uh, although, I should point out, this is why it's in red, I'm not a doctor. I'm not any kind of doctor. I don't have anything to do with any medical device ever. Uh, please don't sue me. <laughs> it, that, that's it. I, it says up there, mostly I work with haptic stuff, that is, devices that work on touch-based, except I'm not really sure if haptics is the right word for it anymore because it's more like electronic haptics or subdermal haptics or something, but it's, that's mostly correct. That's my crappy blog there if anyone wants to visit. It has some documentation and mostly whinging. Okay, so mostly they call me a biohacker. Uh, this is... Experimentation on the lowest of low budgets. I, I have no budget, no money, no anything. So all I work with is stuff that you can get in a kitchen and that you can work with, you know, junk, basically. If it's under 50 euros, I've got it. Otherwise, no. So my goal is functional subdermal electronics. I don't care about LEDs under people's skin. I don't care about stuff that you have to wear. I, don't, I want proper implanted extensions to the human body. So far, this has been mostly successful with a lot of pain and a lot of side effects and things like that. Uh, my personal goal is sensory extension. That is, there's a lot of other goals in this field, but mostly they're just goals. I, as, as far as I can tell, I'm one of the only people who actually works with this stuff rather than uh, sitting there thinking, wouldn't it be great if it actually existed? So although it's just me, uh, this has a lot of potential for expansion. I'm basically the like the, the sort of start-off point. If other people joined in on this, it would be a lot better than it is. So as it says, I'm on the lowest of low budgets. I have no money, no surgical theater, no doctors, no anything. So anything that I can do, you guys can do. If I give you step-by-steps, there's no chance. I mean, you'll definitely be able to follow it. Okay, why? <laughs> Lots of people ask me this all the time. Basically, it's just curiosity. It's curiosity that's probably gonna kill me one day because I've sent myself to hospital a couple times as there's not many other people working on this, so if I don't do it, chances are it won't actually get done. Well, up until now, of course. I'm hoping that this will inspire some of you guys to do things. Uh, they call it grinding rather than actual transhumanist technology because most transhumanist technology is kind of reserved to laboratories for very, very rich people. And if anyone sees me online, they'll know that this pisses me off a lot. I hate things that only people with money can afford, so my goal is to get actual... <laughs> Oh, Christ. <laughs> it's just normal. <laughs> All I want to do is get something interesting that extends your sensory perception that you guys can do. Something that actual normal people on a normal person's budget can follow along with. Tell me if you can still hear me, because this thing's fucking up. <laughs>
I said, anyone can do this. This is, this is just kitchen stuff. I, I used to sterilize things with Rachmaninoff vodka. You know, you can all do this. I have some basic knowledge and some kind of semi-intuitive principles to pass on to you guys, but in the main, this is just really a reminder that this exists. It's kind of common knowledge, or at least I hope it's common knowledge. It can be applied to anything you want. I mean, anything can be used to stimulate nerves, provided that it's subdermal and it gives off the correct current. Uh, you, you can't really go wrong. You need any kind of idea. Any device you want to hook up to this can be hooked up. Uh, you want a compass? Fine. Uh, you want a temperature sensor? Fine. Anything you like. Fundamentally, devices stimulate nerves. All they need to do to do that is to give off a current. Anything that gives off a current and is safe inside your body can be used as a subdermal device, uh, given some pain. <laughs> Okay, a lot of pain. <laughs> Health warnings, I have to give you these, unfortunately, and take up five minutes of your time. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not shit. I'm just left. I sit in my kitchen, I cut myself up. There's a lot of pain in this and a lot of risk. In fact, putting certain things in your fingertips hurts so much that you can't fucking see. So if you, get, if you do get involved in this, uh, please, please make sure you know what you're doing and you're ready for pain because there's a lot. A, a lot. Anesthesia is not legal in a lot of countries, so please find out what's legal and what's not before you do things. Don't sue me. <laughs> you still need a bit of money. Uh, I would tell you guys a bit about this. Self-surgery is the complete last resort. I tried about two weeks of things. I tried every single doctor in my country before I found out that it's illegal. Uh, you have to ask every expert you can get to first. There's a guy called Amal Grafstra in the US who has RFID things done. Boring, I know, but... He had a doctor do it, so some doctors will allow you. Some doctors are bribable, mine are not. Uh, British GPs, as it says, have a crow up their butts and won't let you do anything. So don't even bother trying them and find out what's going on. Read up on infection prevention before you do anything. Uh, you'll need proper tools. You can ask me for where to get yours and what to use, depending on what you're doing. Anesthesia, wound care, that kind of thing. This is all stuff that you'll need to do research on if you're actually going to follow me, which uh, maybe you should. Okay, so this is my main principle, nerve stimulation. Anything can stimulate nerves, as I said. This has been known to medical science for a very long time. As long as you pass current through a nerve, you can set off the nerve. Uh, depending on the strength of the current, this will make the nerve either move muscles. Uh, the sensors that I have just set off small uh, nerve endings, so you get like a sort of tingling sensation. That's mostly what you're looking at. It's a very, very small current. I'm not sure how small, but it's enough not to be noticeable anywhere else. Generally, the only place you can do this is the fingertips because a place has to be quite nerve-rich before this will work. I did try everywhere else. It doesn't work in the back of your hands. It doesn't work on the palms of your hands. It doesn't work on your arms. It, you're going to have to put this in the most painful place, basically. So uh, if you, you, can, you can set off less dense nerves with much higher current, but I'm still experimenting with this. I don't suggest you do. <laughs> leave, it, leave it to me to fuck myself up with this. Natural sensors work the exact same way. This is nothing new. This has been done in the human body for thousands of years because your nerves are electronic. I said, I feel still sensors can do this too. Uh, I have a bunch of magnetic implants which do precisely that, which are how, more or less how the principle came across, although don't think that I invented this because I didn't. Those are invented by Steve Hayworth. I'll be talking more about those later. Uh, anything that's attached to an electrode can be output, so anything can be made into a sensory device. I think I've probably said that like five times now, but I, I wanted to get it across. Although anything you can fit under your skin and hook, up, and hook up to an electrode can work as an implant, given your propensity for pain. Caveats, I have to warn you, uh, you'll need electronics knowledge. I don't have that, so I have a lot of people online who help me out and friends who know it. So it's useful to have some background of yourself. You're all hackers, you probably have more than I do. Bioproofing is a whole world of nasty, rusty, scummy fun. Uh, please make sure that you bioproof things. There's something that you can call, buy called Sugru. That, uh, you get it online. It's uh, moldable silicone rubber. Really useful stuff. Hot glue works too. And as I said, please do your legal research. <coughs> Miniaturization too. Uh, I've had a lot of problems with that because a lot of things come on PCBs that won't actually fit. PCBs themselves are not good for going under your skin. <laughs> Trust me. As it said, if you place it too tightly, sometimes you'll knock into a corner or something and everything will come out and then you have to start again. So be careful of breakage, be careful of society because that's pretty much what they do. They just look at you and they're like, what the fuck did you do that for? Ew, ew, ew. And they all freak out. And it's just stay away from normal people. They're stupid. <laughs> <laughs>
this is a quick aside, if anyone doesn't actually want to cut yourselves open for some reason, then you can always look into haptics. My friends at the Sensebridge Collective have a website all about this stuff. Haptics is basically no pain, no risk, boring, and it's to do with uh, external skin stimulation instead of internal. So it's not a permanent adaptation. It's things that you wear, like a wearable hat to come, but that kind of thing. They're much smarter than I am, so their devices are actually, you know, production. You can buy a kit. It's, I'm, I'm not advertising. It's just easier than this. Past projects I came to talk to you guys about, I don't know how much time I've got. Excellent. Uh, I've got less time than I thought I had, so... <laughs> Uh, these are the ones that I've actually done. I've messed around with RFID tags, I've messed around with temperature sensing, I've played a lot with these neodymium implants, and uh, one of my... Hmm? I'll explain later. And no questions here if you want, but the South Pole is my big project, which I'll be explaining in a second, because that's the only thing that's actually cool. As I said, they're really simple experiments, it's just that the results are quite interesting. You can apply this to a lot of things that some people don't seem to think about. Okay, fun with RFID is what I've been doing for oof, years and years. This was maybe three years ago. RFID, RF Radio Frequency Identification Protocol, you all know this. It's just simplistic stuff for tagging things. Obviously, you can tag people. If you just get a simple reader, you can put an ampoule, which is a tiny glass tag for all kinds of things. You can put it inside you because it's bioproof, and you can track yourself. And I had a keyboard running that wouldn't let anyone log on to Windows or Linux unless it was actually me present there. But as you all know, I know what you're thinking. It's so easy to break. Yeah, it is. It's boring. You don't really need to implant yourself with this stuff at all. I mean, I, said, I just did it for kicks. It's just an interesting little toy to play with. Uh, if the surgical procedure is just... Well, it's just a scalpel, really. I mean, anything can be put under your skin. All you need to do is get deep enough to open up a little hole, and you can put things in. I mean, it's really simple. <laughs> if, anyone <wants> to <laughs> if anyone wants to know precisely how I did this, all of these presence or absence hacks with RFID are all in Amal Grafstra's book. It's called RFID Toys, but that has step-by-steps. It's all online by now because it's well old about how I did pretty much everything, with some variations, obviously, because mine is subdermal. RFID is crap for security. It's just don't even bother thinking about using it as your main security thing. It's an extra cute little, hey, look what I can do thing, but it's really not uh, good. I mean, it's, it's so easy to clone, and you can, you can use it as sort of an extra layer on top of your existing security system, but don't think about using it for securing your house or something. It's just the most easy thing to play with. If you want to figure out some little things about just the principles of experimentation with surgery, then RFID is a thing for you. Or you could ask me. <laughs> Overall outcomes, um, I didn't really get much out of this, other than some simplistic kicks. But mostly uh, I got a whole bunch of ebly bleebly about the mark of the beast, and uh, apparently I'm a disciple of Satan, and uh, all kinds of things. There's a whole tag community for people doing interesting things with the chips, but it's not really my thing. Like I said, there's a book out there that has all the information. RFID is really well documented. This is probably the only thing I do that actually has external documentation. Go on. <laughs> ah, yes, the Themista device. Uh, at one point, I, I, I'm on a lot of medications, as you can probably tell. Like, a lot of medications. So one of the side effects is occasionally my sense of temperature just blips in and out of existence. Uh, at some point, I got bored and decided to build a Themista-based input device to read this for me. Because, hell, who wouldn't? <laughs> it was to have a... It's really simple. You just hook Themistas up to resistors, up to a battery, with an induction coil, and you hook that up to some LEDs or whatever, or some servos or electrodes as output. Really simple, just a little circuit. But um, I, I didn't have enough electronics knowledge to do that, as we'll explain later. It would have worked, but it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> the basic idea was just, like I said, lithium cell attached to thermistors, attached to LEDs. Level of brightness or level of haptic stimulation would determine the level of heat. Could have been a haptic device, could have been a visual device, could have been whatever you wanted. Mostly from this I learned how to waterproof things, which I'll explain to you guys later, because it was knowledge hard earned. <laughs> uh, the waterproofing before I discovered this Suguru stuff was almost impossible to figure out. I, I couldn't find anything that would stay, what's the word, intact inside the human body. I, I couldn't find anything that wouldn't be degraded by your natural enzymes or whatever. 
I mean, especially something through which small devices like the thermistors would actually work. I think then there was things like calibrating the damn things and stepping down the voltage so that it didn't actually shock me when I put it in my hand, and all kinds of things. At this point, it was a transdermal thing, and I would like to say to all of you, if you're considering anything, got any projects, please put them completely under the skin. Don't think of having things hanging out because it goes so wrong so fast. It's, it's just, it's bad. It's, it's stinky and nasty and bad. <laughs> Lessons learned. Just because it's waterproof, don't mean it's bioproof. Uh, trust me on this one. <laughs> just because you can leave it in the bath for three days doesn't mean it's fine inside your hand. You have to test things or let me test them. Transdermal implants, bad idea. Nasty, stinky sepsis, bad. <laughs> It's almost impossible to keep them clean. Also, I learned a lot about basic electronics from this that you guys probably already knew. By the time I gave up on this stupid project, the sense came back, and now it's gone again. So <laughs> go figure. Some experiments, you don't learn anything. Go on. Uh, these guys, I actually can show you how to do these guys. They're basically they're not my invention. I don't want anyone thinking that I invented these things because Steve Hayworth did in Arizona, and he wants 50 euros per implant and 150 to put them inside you, which is why I'm here because I want to tell you how to do it for free. <laughs> so that, that's that's the raw cost. That's the cost of getting the implants imported. They're very expensive, but if you want something professional and go and get some, well, I guess you could do, you could go and get a new sense, whole six of them for like, all of your savings. <laughs> do do consider Steve Hayworth as an, as an alternative. Uh, I had some too, I think, fitted professionally, and then I decided that these cost too much money. Basically, they act as a sensory extension, like I was telling you before. They're tiny magnets. They, when they come into contact with an electromagnetic field, they resonate and generate electricity of their own, which obviously, because they're in your fingertips, sets off nerves. So when you come into contact with any kind of device field, any any power lines in the walls, things on a socket, CD-ROMs, hard drives, anything like that, then it gets it off. It's just a little, it's a sensory extension, a cute little one. Not particularly useful, so please don't go thinking this will make you into Cyberman or something, because it's, it's just for kicks, really. It's just an extra layer of data on top of the data you already get. But they're easy to make, and you can do it yourself. First thing I had to do was figure out how to get these things inside me by yourself, which is actually quite hard. Uh, you can't have piercers do it in most places anymore. In Amsterdam and Norway, this is still legal. So if you want to go do it professionally, do it there. But you can't do it in France. You can't do it. You can do it sort of in Germany, but you have to be in a piercer studio. Lots and lots of problems with doing this at any kind of professional level. So I figured it was much better to do by myself. So I sat down in my kitchen with a vegetable peeler, I shit you not, and I decided to put things in my hands. <laughs> The first time I ever sat down, it went horribly, horribly wrong. Uh, the whole thing went septic, and I put myself in the hospital for two weeks. Uh, it was not very pretty, so lesson learned, sterilize everything. <laughs> sterilize everything with vodka if you have to, but make sure you get everything. Uh, there was the two, two or three attempts so far have been successful. I still need one more to go, and it's, it's really not a difficult procedure. I'll be telling you pretty much precisely how to do it later on. But, as I said, that horrible failure was pretty goddamn horrible, and I learned a lot from there. Uh, mostly just simple stuff, like get surgery over with as quickly as possible, because you're not very coherent during it, and where to find... Simple trick, how to find veins in your hands, just shine a torch through them, so that you don't hit an artery and bleed out and have to get taken to hospital, because it's bad. <laughs> Uh, various things, like delicate components, uh, the number of times that I've snicked things coated in silicon and then had them rust inside. If anything's snicked at all, like if you've chipped it or dropped it on the floor, whatever, don't use it because they do rust so badly, even if you can't see the cut yourself. Uh, things like spotters, you always need a spotter with you, always, because you will pass out, even if you think you're hardcore and you need to use proper tools. Don't use a scalpel for anything in your fingertips. It's too painful and you won't be able to do it. Use a big ass five millimeter needle instead. I hope you like needles. <laughs> Successfully installed implants, they, they just function like any other sense you've got. They're just there in the background. They're not intrusive, it's just they, they set off when something's there. They don't when it's not. Depending on how strong the field is, so there's an there's an MRI lab in my university that I can feel from about two meters away. Most devices you can feel by about mm, this far. Really strong ones, really this far. 
But it's just, it's like an interesting local range sense. So what precisely they sense, I don't know. It's some kind of EM field. It comes off devices, it comes off power lines. I don't know exactly what it is. One of you probably will, because I'm not very bright. Ask me later. <laughs> Uh, like I said, that's my half-baked theory about magnetic resonance, is that you come into contact with fields, the magnets resonate and generate electricity. I don't know if that's right, it's probably not. Max Planck would probably choke me for saying that. But it doesn't matter to the function of the device. They work no matter how well you know them. They work if you don't know they're there. Could be tested via double blind, hasn't been tested yet. Would accept any testing. Question lots of people ask me, is this actually worth it? The sense is rudimentary, it is short range, it's very, very crude. Uh, if curiosity is not your thing, please don't go doing this to yourself because it's not for lots of people. Most transhumanist dreams are all about immortality and eternal youth and wanting to become Superman and wanting to walk up walls like Spider-Man and shit and it's just not gonna happen. This is very crude, very hacky transhumanism. It's, it's not, if you want eternal life, you need to go bother somebody else. <laughs> The second part of working with these things was that the components themselves, as I've said, are actually very expensive. They're coated in medical grade silicon, they're made of rare earth magnets, they're, uh, they're coated in gold as well, they're, they're not cheap to get. I managed to spend all of my grant on one set of them. The official ones, that's the ones that are made out of that shit, you can only get from Hayworth or from his suppliers, so two places. Uh, they're, they're, they're like unobtainium, they're pretty much impossible to get hold of. So the import rules are weird on them and you'll get taxed like 20% of the value and it's just not worth trying to get these things to a country where you, they're not made. But the component is just very, very simple. It's just neodymium, which you can buy en masse, non-coated. The problem is the coating of gold and silicon. That's so, somebody showed me, if you Google neodymium magnet disks, you can get four or five industrial suppliers. You can buy a bag of these things for the price of Hayworth's one. So, all you have to do is basically mimic what these guys are. I mean, they're, they're a little tiny two millimeter wide, one millimeter deep neodymium disc, coated in gold leaf, not necessary, coated in medical silicon. So the final's about four millimeters by two millimeters. And they're, like I said, they're very easy to, want to obtain when coated, but they're toxic. They're really, really, really toxic. Don't put them in your fingers raw. Uh, they, they need coating because they'll poison the crap out of you. So when he, what I was working on is finding a way to coat them and a material that will coat them properly that you could get without using an injection mold that you can get that you guys could, well, take out of a packet in your kitchen and use. Uh, finally, I found one, which is somebody else showed it to me online. It's called Sugru. It, if you Google this, you can buy it in little packets. It's really strange. It's like a moldable silicon rubber, a bit like Play-Doh that hardens into silicon. So if you buy this stuff, obviously, really easily, you can just coat stuff up. You can coat whatever the hell you like. I mean, I've tested nodes of it on neodymium. I've tested loads of it just plain in the body. I've got lumps of it in there that have been there for six or seven months. It's completely non-toxic. It doesn't do balls all. And if you can't get hold of Sugru, you can also use hot glue from a glue gun, because it's the same thing. <laughs> uh, lots of things inside me are coated in hot glue gun glue, because it's just, it seems to be sort of a perfect bioproofer. A super glue, bad idea. I've tried this before, and I almost lost a fingertip. Don't do it. You think it's the same thing, but it's not. <laughs> you can basically you can order the discs and some sugar online, get some needles and some sterilization gear and a friend to help you out. You can do the whole thing for maybe twenty, maybe forty quid. That's six implants and a lot of pain at once. But if you did it all at once, it would be very, very cost effective. And like I said, it costs about a hundred quid. <laughs> what? <laughs> you could maybe you could maybe get one for a hundred quid in a piercer studio and then you'd have to find a piercer to get it because they don't do it in England anymore. There's one guy in Germany here in Mannheim that does it, but that's about it. So like I said, if anyone wants complete instructions for this, I can give it to you. I'm just not sure whether I'm allowed to give it to you here, so uh, email me. <laughs> it's a, you probably get the procedure from just what I've said. Nodes everywhere. Anyone could do this. Absolutely anyone could make up a whole batch of these things and give them to everyone, except I think that's illegal, so don't. <laughs> you could, you, please don't put them in anyone else, because a friend of mine got into real trouble for that. You can put them in yourself, you can be your own guinea pig, but I think having other people as guinea pigs makes you kind of a mad scientist, so don't. <laughs> just, just check your local laws first. <laughs> So this one was pretty much one of my most successful experiments. It's the only one I've finished. 
Uh, you learn how to, I learned how to do the entire procedure so I can give step by steps to anyone who wants it. I know how to manufacture the implants on an actual budget rather than a ridiculous gold leaf budget. I know everything about aftercare. These things are pretty much a success. I just wish people would sort of like them. Uh, the, the only thing is that they feel kind of nasty for about two weeks before you put them in. I mean, after you put them in. So uh, do expect some grossness because it's really nasty. Uh, like I said, just email me if you guys actually want step by steps. You might not need them. Next thing I was working on is, well, the Sensebridge Hackerspace, there are a couple of colleagues of mine. They have a North Paw, which is a haptic compass I talked about earlier. It's just a, it's attached to a PCB. PCB senses compass direction via a little compass module. It's attached to some electro, um, I mean some motors, and whichever, you wear it on an anklet around your ankle, and whichever motor is facing north, buzzes north. Very interesting concept, but I don't like wearable stuff, I like subdermal stuff. So I decided to make a proper subdermal version. I bought a North Pole and started trying to figure out how you would make this thing subdermal. It's basically, they call, I don't know whether the word haptic is still appropriate, but it is a constant compass. This thing, if you wear it normally, it's a constant sense of which way is north, and if you implanted it, it would be a proper sense of which way is north. It turned out to be a hell of a lot more complex than I've already, than I actually imagined. I figured you could just take a north pole and cut it up and put it in, and that's not how it works at all. Uh, for a start, everything's too big. For another thing, you can't actually use motors. Well, there's no point using motors inside the skin because uh, that's silly. You could just use electrodes. Okay, so this is just the North Pole itself. Sensebridge built a custom PCB that runs it, but the whole thing just takes data in from the compass module, powers it via a battery pack, uses a ring of servos, and it's all held in place with this fabric anklet. You get it in a kit, you build it yourself, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's well tested, so the actual principle works quite well. Quinn Norton's got one, it's been in H Plus magazine, it's been out for about two years, it's very well known. Uh, Southpaw, which is what mine will be called because I'm the founder, it, is the same thing. It's just different hardware. So the principle's not new. I mean, uh, this haptic sensor has been around for a really long time. Uh, existing North Pole, you can't just chuck it in. Uh, there's batteries that it runs on, which is a bad idea. You can't put those inside you. It needs bioproofing. Everything's way too big. Like I said, motors are kind of stupid because it's just using a middleman. You really need electrodes under the skin. Uh, it doesn't adapt to change of axis. So if you put your head like that, it won't tell you which one's north anymore. It'll still be pointing north as if you were walking directly. That needs fixing, but not a problem because we have a different microprocessor. And it only has eight directions, which is kind of crap. So means and people set out to fix this, really, and make it not only better, but more of a more implanted device. It is just for fun. It's not finished yet. Uh, like I said, my controller uses a much smaller microcontroller rather than a custom PCB because I ain't smart enough for that. So it uses a little tiny, uh, I think it's about two millimeters by three millimeters, a little mi MSP microcontroller. Philips compass chip is a little bit bigger. I'm still trying to find a miniature version of that, but at a pinch, the normal one could fit too. It uses an inductive receiver coil. Uh, the transmitter coil is external to it, so you can charge it overnight while it's still inside you. Lithium cells. This is I didn't work out the coil by myself. Somebody else helped me. I don't know if they're even here or not, but so that, that wasn't me. I'm not smart enough for that shit. Output is 16 euro electrodes on your lower left leg. Could be on your right leg as well, but it's better to put it on the hand that, or leg that you write with, just because you're more used to things coming in from there. Uh, mine's on the left leg, like I said, could be anywhere you want. It's just better on the leg because that tends to be more of a stable axis. And my immediate concerns are more like getting components <laughs> rather than figuring out blueprints because I, I know what I'm gonna do, I just don't quite have the money to do it yet. So if anyone wants to, you know, catch up and do this instead of me, go ahead. <laughs> Piecing together electronics I've been doing, I've been figuring out how to not shock myself with it, figuring out how to work the power transfer, all kinds of things. Figuring out how to keep coils stable inside your body is quite difficult also. Well, it turns out all you have to do is make more stable cuts, but there you go. Our future plans, well, they're not really future, more like immediate future, but I need to get a physical prototype working before anything else. I mean, uh, the, the programming side of it's really not going to be hard. All it has to do is take in data and put in output correspondingly. But it needs testing larger objects and Suguru. I've tested a lot of large things, but never all together. So I don't know how a lot of, lots of implants in one area is actually going to go together. This is all very experimental. <laughs> uh, I need more people to join in also, because I'm quite bored of this just being me. So, uh, if anyone wants to join in. <laughs> 
Also, I need to learn a lot more about electronics because all the stuff I know involves a PCB, and that's really not practical inside you. So, trying to leave it As I said, you can do better at this than I can. Uh, pretty much all of you. You're all hackers. I'm not a real hacker. I just do things with cutting myself up and stuff. But somebody with an actual real-world experience of electronics would be able to do really well at this. You just need to know what to use for coatings and what to put where. It's, it's really not difficult knowledge. So people with better, uh, what's the word, brains, would be able to do better projects than me. It's just that nobody does so far, probably because of the self-harm, but whatever. <laughs> it's not self-harm if it does something, right? Anyway, that's about everything, so ask me questions. You. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay, you. hang on, hang on. So before question time, oh, right. hang Not on. You. <laughs> so after all of those very, very well-advised warnings about doing this, raise your hand if you still want to give this a try. <laughs> yeah! Well, that's better than I expected. <laughs> okay, now, if you have questions, raise your hand, I'll come to you with the mic. Or you Dude, should come to me with the mic. Dude. Mic. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, without a mic, it doesn't come up on the feed. Um, two questions. One, how easy is it to get hold of local anesthetics? And Not very. And two, um, how, what repression have you come under in Britain, for example, from doctors? Have they tried to remove the implants from you? No, they've, they've advised that I have them removed, but they can't actually make you do anything. They, just, uh, they refuse to treat any medical problems that have anything to do with the implants because it's self-inflicted, and they do tend to get kind of arsy about it. So you'll run into a lot of bullshit, but no one will actually stop you from doing it. Uh, also, getting hold of local anesthetics by, you mean any good anesthetic, you mean anything that ends in cane, uh, almost impossible. You can buy lidocaine powder online, but I don't know how to make it up. There's no instructions online. I managed to find one, in, one set of instructions on some survival website about how to mix it up properly, but that's the problem. You need to, if you dose it up too much, you can give yourself a heart attack, so you really need to get the right dosage, and I've never been able to. Also, some medical colleague informs me that sometimes it doesn't work on your hands. So I don't even know. I just do everything without. I mean, if you, if you ice everything up, it's not that bad. Okay, it is, but y it's worth it. <laughs> um. Like three. Uh, uh, okay, first, I think you are a hacker. Well, you hack stuff. Whoa, 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 who's talking to me? Oh, <laughs> you. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> And um, the question is, uh, well, it was late, so probably it's invalid, but uh, what legal and what medical precautions do you suggest? Uh, immunization or something? No, no, I, not, nothing like immunization. I just suggest finding out what's legal to do and what's not, because mostly working on yourself, you're completely fine. It, in, I don't know if it, that's illegal in any country. It's just that doing things on other people is usually completely no-go. Uh, for example, in England, me doing this to any of you guys leads to uh, 10 years in prison for mutilation with intent to scar. So uh, I, I wouldn't if I were you. Just do it on yourself. <laughs> it's usually fine on yourself, but be sure to check it. At insurance. What? Like, like med insurance. Uh, Is no. there some difference? If insurance you won't cover yourself? this. <laughs> 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 no, <Not> ever. <laughs> Um, yeah. First of all, uh, you scare me shitless. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but luckily... Uh, well, Come on, man. I'm only little. You also make me curious. Uh, first thing, medical people can grow new skin and uh, implant it. Did you ever think about finding someone who grows skin around a sensor and then have it implanted it's on It's not really necessary. You can, you can put just about anything under your skin if you peel back enough. Yeah, but it's under and you can have... You to could honest, grow it right into the skin. Yeah, but the problem of rejection, you'd have just as much hassle trying to put that in as you would trying to put it in the old school way. I don't think it would actually help you. Besides, that's another thing that you need actually access to a lab for, and all I've got is a kitchen. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, may I do another question too? Yeah. Um, oh, what was it? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You, you, you use uh, sensory input that's already used for heat and... Um, and pressure? Yeah, I just use um, standard sensory devices. Does it, 
do the new desizers, do they affect your heat and pressure feeling? Uh, no, not while I had a, well, there's, there's nothing on them. Sometimes, if you, because they're inside my fingertips, the physical devices, if you touch surfaces, sometimes it's strange if they're magnetic because the implants will be attracted to the surface, but nothing's fucked up. They don't mess up my touch or pressure sensors or anything. They just function as extras rather than anything getting in the way. Um, I have one question about having multiple magnets. Does, does that mean you can uh, specially feel a magnetic field? Specially? Specially, with mm. more than one dimension. Oh, spatially. Uh, yes, yes. I suck. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you can tell how big it is, how far it extends. You can even feel it getting weaker towards the edges. It's, it's quite... Um, you could draw a picture of it if I could draw. Good. <laughs> It's pretty precise. <laughs> Thank you. So, oh, dude's um, got another question. <laughs> there are some questions from the um, peace missions from the I IRC. So uh, the first question is, if you ever read, if you're, it's me over here. <laughs> if I'm what now? Waving at you. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was him. Ah <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> What's so, the question, Rob? The questions from the IRC are um, if you are not worried that you could probably be owned or that some stuff you implanted could be exploited. Oh, well, I try to make everything GPL. <laughs> so any software. <laughs> <laughs> I'm GPL. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care if I get GPL, but I'm, I'm trying very hard to make everything open. Like, I didn't actually want to show my face today because I wanted this to be just public information rather than coming from me. So hopefully it's not linked enough to me for me to be controlled at all. Um, and the other question was, um, you already told us that you yeah, will stick this stuff in some silico silicon. Yep. But how do you attach it to your, um, well, internally? You don't need to. Uh, usually there's, there's very few places in the body where it'll migrate. If you put things in the back of the hands, they move around, but not very much. So generally, you don't need to attach things. They just sit in tissue and stay there. I mean, it sounds kind of counterintuitive. You'd think it would move all over your body, but it doesn't. It just says where it's put. So um, how has your life changed? So, you, you know, you Good talked question. about hacking for just hacking purpose. But hmm. is it, like, worth it? Should oh, I'd we say. do it to, you know, enhance our lives or stuff? I'd say it's worth it just to satisfy curiosity. But... Apart from that, it, it hasn't really changed anything. You wouldn't know I had modifications if, you, if I didn't tell you. So I'm not sure it really changes anything at all. All it does is make me more curious. I mean, uh, by the time I'm done, you'll probably be able to tell because obviously my leg will look really messed up by the time this southpaw is done. But uh, so far, not much, really. I mean, I'm still as curious as I ever was. So that dude behind you has got a question. Yeah, we, we only have time for one more, so Okay, just you, dude. <laughs> Hit me. <laughs> or don't. <laughs> so, I'm a software guy. I'm scared shitless by hardware because, well, two days ago, I ruined a drone, and then it had to be taken apart and put, together, put back together to fit in a replacement part. So Sometimes I have to do that too. Where, where, does your, where does your total disregard... When software fails, I can just recompile it or something. I'm sorry, so say that really slowly, dude. When software fails, I can just recompile it. When hardware fails, well, when it needs to be fails, taken apart. I have to cut myself up and take it apart and try yeah. again. Where does your total disregard for your own wetware come from? <laughs> do you try to justify that? <laughs> Mine's just not important. Okay. It's just... Bodily health takes a big fuck off second seat to curiosity, you know? It's just not important. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you probably okay. shouldn't be applauding that, guys. That's not healthy. <laughs> okay, we are totally out of time. Please head out on that door, not that door. Thanks Thank for you again. That was awesome. <laughs>